Hello and welcome back to another Wednesday live stream. We're here to help you improve your English. And if the th why do I always start like this? I always start with mistakes. You have if to rewind, start again, take five, clap. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Wednesday live stream. My name's Craig. I'm from the website mansioningles.com where you can learn English for free. There's lots of materials there, lovingly put up on the website by Lewis. Hello, Lewis. I know you're watching. Um, oh. <laughs> and we also have a newsletter that we send out twice a month if you're interested in free exercise, free exercises at whatever your level is, then go over there to Mansion Inglés and join our newsletter list. And with me on my right over here is Lynn from PrettyLikeThis.com. <laughs> Hello, Craig. Hi. Hello. And hello uh, to people who are watching us live now. My name is Lynn and my website is putitlikethis.com. And um, yeah, and it's nice to be back and to be talking about our topics today. Yeah. And I can see that some people have already started joining our old faithful Hema. Hi, Hema. Hi, Hema. <laughs> nice <laughs> nice Good to, to see, see you. that you're there again. And um, yeah. Maybe I've started. I didn't. Yeah, I'm. I'm fluffing. I think I need to rewind as well. But so I don't think I told people what putitlikethis.com is about, did I? <laughs> no. Why don't you tell people what they can find over at putitlikethis.com? You can website. see that we're having a we're having a strange day today, <laughs> right? Yeah. So at putitlikethis.com, I'm an online teacher. And um, and I make tailor-made courses for my students. So if any of you are interested in having an English course online, um, then you can get in touch with me. You can go to my website. You see if you, you you can find out more about me and what kind of courses I offer. And um, and I'd be delighted to hear from you. Yeah. Okay. So here we now go. we can start saying hello to people. <laughs> now we can welcome people who are watching us live. And thank you as well if you're watching the replay. So hello, Gemma. Good to see you here. Fabiana has joined us. Arturo mm -hmm. from Honduras. Hello, Arturo. Hi, Arturo. And I'm sure more people will be joining as There's we... Norma again as well. Norma's hello, Norma here. again. <laughs> as we begin the introduction. So this week we're talking about some things that we can't bear to part with. But what does that mean, Lynn, when you part with something? It looks like a phrasal verb to me. Well, yes, it is. And it means that things that you can't bear to throw away or get rid of. And, um, and I'm really excited about this because I actually heard on the radio a few weeks ago, I heard uh, somebody on the radio doing a program about this. And I thought, oh, that's going to be a great topic to, to talk to Craig about. Because I think this is really interesting. Because Craig, are you a hoarder? Do you keep things? Or are you like a minimalist? Do you throw I things used away? To be, I'm somewhere in the middle. I used to be a hoarder. I used to keep everything, especially when I had a bigger place a bigger house mm -hmm. but my flat here in Valencia is quite small and I don't have a lot of cupboard space I don't have places to hoard things and mm -hmm. put things in different places so I'm been trying to get rid of things throw them away and try to reduce my amount of possessions to the minimum however there are some things that I just cannot bear to throw away so that's our topic this week, and it's a show and tell session. So we're going to show you some objects. We want you to write the name of the objects in the chat, see if you know the vocabulary, and then we'll explain why we can't bear to part with these things. Mm -hmm. And we have another challenge for you as well in this, in this class, because often when uh, Craig and I do these classes, we anticipate some vocabulary and we often give we put up a banner to to tell you some vocabulary and to give you some tips about vocabulary but this week we want to do a different exercise with you so this week we want all of you to be listening really closely and we want you to mention when when you hear Craig and I talking naturally to each other we want to see if you can if you can notice language. Now, this is a you're going to play a noticing game with us. So 
after each intervention, if you notice one or two words that we've used that you think are interesting, then you can put them in the chat file. And then after yeah, the intervention, write just write them down. And then after the intervention, when we see what things you've noticed, Craig and I will comment on them. Now, the reason that this is a great skill to develop is because many people feel with English sometimes that they reach a plateau, that they're not going any further. That's how often, I feel with my Spanish. Yeah, and it, and it often happens when you're kind of like at B1, B2 level. Maybe you've done B2 and you've got the first certificate and you think, yeah, but my English, it's just there and I keep making the same mistakes and all of this. And then what I try to encourage with my students, I think it's a lot to do with the fact that you've stopped noticing. When you get to B2, you have all the language you need to survive, right? So you can go to England, you can go to it, you can talk to somebody and you can get your message across, right? So and then you kind of get a bit lazy and you stop with that. Right. But if you want to push ahead and you want to overcome that that plateau, that stagnation where you are, then what you have to do is you have to start thinking like an absolute beginner again. And if you can remember how it felt when you were an absolute beginner, when you were an absolute beginner, every single word that you heard was different. So you were going, hello, hello. I what is hello? <laughs> right. So you have to try to recover that sense of um, noticing language. Now, you can do it, but you have to listen really actively and you listen actively and you start picking out bits of the language that you understand. But maybe you think, ah, oh, but I don't actually use that or, oh, that's a bit interesting the way she said that. Right. So that's the challenge for today. All of you have got to work hard today. So you've got to listen. You'll be entertained. But we want you to notice some of our language. As yeah. Well. And just write those words in the chat when you do notice them. And to give you an idea of what we mean, when we introduced today's topic, things that we can't bear to part with, we used three or four synonyms for part with something. Do you remember? Mm the ones we used. Can you remember the different ways we said to part with things at the beginning of this stream? Mm -hmm. And also, suggested. what was the word for keeping things in the house? If you're the kind of person who always keeps things and never parts with them, and you always have wardrobes and cupboards full of things, what was the word we used for that kind of person? Mm -hmm. So let's see if you can um, write those words in the chat. Yeah, in the meantime, we can start saying hello to lots of people because more people have joined us. So I've got to say hello to Monica because I just met Monica today. Hello, Monica um, from Cadiz. And hello to Arturo, to Xavi or Javi, uh -huh, um, to Dolores from Mexico. Hello, Maria Dolores. Damara and uh, Eduardo is back with us again and Erasmo hello. I've met Hi, Erasmo, Erasmo too hello Erasmo from Brazil yeah so nice to see you all again right has anybody noticed that language or are you all a little bit asleep? Fabiana's trying she's, ah, well she's done, suggested Fabiana. holder now it was similar to holder uh -huh. but the spelling's different and the pronunciation is a little bit different it's yeah. not holding something but it's very very similar Mm -hmm. Eduardo um, also heard uh, uh, holder. Not, not holder, but not throw holder. away. We did say throw away. We did good. say throw away. Good. Very good. Uh -huh. Hi, Claudia. Claudia's just joined us as well. Hello from Mexico too. We've got quite a few people from Mexico tonight. That's nice. Okay. Let's show you, put, let's show you the vocabulary. Show yeah. So as Eduardo says, and you're absolutely right, we did say throw away. So mm -hmm. to part with something is to, to throw away. If it's rubbish, you throw it away. And more colloquially, more informally, you can also say chuck out. To chuck is similar to throw, but it's uh -huh. a lot more colloquial. And mm -hmm. to get rid of things, if you're a Spanish speaker, it's deshacer de algo. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to, to give up things, you don't want them anymore, you give them up or you give them away. Maybe you donate to charity, you give things away to friends as well. Mm -hmm. And you do without things. So you don't need those 
500 cups and glasses you've got in the cupboard so you can do without a hundred of them, for example. And what is really interesting about this for you all to notice is that every one of those alternatives is a phrasal verb. The Latin equivalent would be to dispose of, but nobody says, are you disposing of anything? <laughs> Have you disposed of anything lately, Craig? Nobody I, says no, that. I wouldn't no, say that. No, you wouldn't say that. So of. every, every, Every one of those verbs for that action is, um, is a phrasal verb. And then there at the end, we had, um, well, we had another word, secret stash, which we actually didn't use, but I'll explain that in a moment. But we also had hoarder. Now, many of you thought we were saying holder, but we were saying hoarder, H-O-A-R-D-E-R. And there's a verb as well. That's the noun. The verb is to hoard. And it's a long or sound, to hoard. And to hoard is when you collect things and you will not give them up. So sometimes if you are a hoarder, your house can be quite messy as well, I think. If you are you a hoarder? Things. Would you say you were a hoarder? No, I'm not. I am not a hoarder because I really don't like cluttered houses so I like I can't say I'm a minimalist because I've got three daughters so when there's five of you living in a house it's impossible to be a minimalist right <laughs> but I have a, I have a tendency that I'd like to be a minimalist <laughs> it's like a it's like an aspiration <laughs> but I've never achieved it and I don't want to achieve it completely I do have pretty things around what I have is I have a secret stash of my favorite objects. <laughs> and uh, a secret stash, a secret uh, means it's not open for the world. Not many people know this, but I actually have a stash, which is a hidden collection of things that I know I would never, ever throw away. And I hope and we'll, we'll be seeing some today. of those today. So I can't yeah. wait to see what Lynn's got to, to show us. <laughs> now, this is going to be quite complicated for you because we want you to do three things during the rest of this live, this, this uh, broadcast. The first thing we do, we want you to do is to write the name of the things we show you. That's number one. Number two, play the noticing game. So any words, vocabulary that you're curious about, that you want to ask us about, write those words in the chat as well. And also the third thing, while we're speaking, if you can think of something that you can't part with, write down this URL, join us in the stream, and we want to hear why you can't get rid of something in your possession. So I'll put that address also at the bottom of the screen here. You can see it, streamyard.com slash, and then those letters. And then I will bring you onto the live stream with us. So things that we can't bear to part with. Lynn, do you want to go first? Well, I will. And you know what? I'm going to be doing a strip tease. Watch this. <laughs> I need the music. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this, what I'm wearing here, here, this thing, this is something that I absolutely cannot bear to part with. Do you know how old this is, Craig? Well, you mentioned at the beginning when we first started speaking about the possessions, um, mm -hmm. and I think you said it was something like 60 years, is it? 50, it is 60 over 60 years old. I haven't got the exact age of it, but it's between 60 and 70. And this, I can't say the name of it because you're going to try to think, yeah. what it's, is this It's called? not a sweater, is it? It's not a no, jumper. it's not it's... a sweater. It's made of beautiful wool, right? So, And the wool has little speckles in it, little speckles, little different colours. And, um, and I think this kind of wool was actually very popular in the 1950s, <laughs> which is where it's from it's from the 1950s and this car this this thing was um was made it was knitted by my mother for herself before she had children 
And then, um, so my mother wore it all the time. So first of all, I could never throw this away because it is it has a huge emotional significance for me because I think... I, I, I haven't got a physical memory of it, but I'd like to think that I can remember cuddling my mummy <laughs> when I was a little girl, when she was wearing this cardigan. And she wore it a lot. So I, I, I do have a visual picture of my mother wearing this cardigan. And then the when I became an adult and I went away to university, I wanted to be trendy. And at that time, this kind of wool was kind of vintage look. And I remember at university thinking I was fashionable, probably wasn't, but, <laughs> and I used to wear this cardigan, uh, this oh, <laughs> back to front, <laughs> oh, gave it away. <laughs> um, I wore this, this piece of clothing back to front with the buttons done up at the back. And very I used to put like I used to put this scarf around it, and it was a very 1980s look. <laughs> and I used to think I was great. <laughs> and then um, I still couldn't throw it away because, of course, it was my my mother's. And then when I moved here, I had it with me. I took it to Germany, and then when I moved from Germany to Spain, I got it out again, and I thought, "Oh, do I really wear? I don't wear this." And then I thought, no, but I can't get rid of this. So it came all the way to Spain with me. And when my children were small, I used to wear it around the house as part of my home clothes. I don't know if mm. you wear home clothes. Oh, yes. Things that you, that you Absolutely. wear at home that you wouldn't clothes. wear outside. Exactly. So I used to wear it as my home clothes. And then I stopped wearing it. And then just to finish off the beautiful loop, my daughter last year when she went on Erasmus to Poland she needed really warm clothes and she said let me see your jumpers because of course in Valencia we don't have a lot of sweaters or wool things because it's it's usually quite warm here mm -hmm. so I said come and look in my wardrobe and she loved it and she took it to <laughs> Poland and wore it as a student in Poland oh, that's like so third generation that's third generation wearing this so I definitely could never ever throw this away never ever right. Mm -hmm. Very special meaning. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Eduardo says that you said <laughs> cardigan three times. <laughs> so no surprises, no surprises there. Um, I think they should lose a point for that. I should. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but but our, it's right. It's a cardigan. It's a cardigan. Yeah. Anything cardigan. that has like a buttons, like a sweater, but it has buttons to do up or maybe a zip. It's a it's a cardigan. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes a cardi. We shorten it to cardi. cardi yeah, sometimes. we say nice cardi, a woolly. But did cardi. you notice any words that Lynn said while she was uh, speaking there? If you have any questions, vocabulary that you noticed, please write that in the chat. One that I noticed that I don't know if you know, I'm just writing a banner for it here is mm -hmm. wool. That's the mm -hmm. material that the cardigan is made of. Mm -hmm. Lano, if you're a Spanish speaker, so wool. It's mm -hmm. a woolen cardigan. Any other words that you picked up on that you noticed that, mm -hmm. that came Eduardo's, to mind? Eduardo's picked up to knit. To knit. I said my mother knitted it, which is uh, when you have those needles and you knit things. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'll pick up one, but we're just helping you for this first round. Huh? You guys have to be a little bit more attentive. I said uh, the, 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 the phrase... When this is wearing it the correct way with the buttons at the front. But when I was in university, I wore it with the buttons at the back. And I used a phrase which back to meant front? the other way around. Yeah, well, I know you know it, Craig. Oh. <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing. That's right. But I said the phrase back to front, which means it's the other way around. Uh -huh. I wore it back to front. Mm -hmm. How sweet, Lynn, says Chantal. And Maria Dolores, mm -hmm. um, after like, Maria Dolores, you use an infinitive or a gerund. A gerund is probably mm -hmm. more common. I like knitting. If you have a, an activity or a sport that you like, use the ING word. I like knitting. I like skiing. I like photography. I like taking photographs, etc. I wish I could knit, Maria Dolores. I really do wish I could knit because you can't get nice wool things anymore. They're very, very expensive. And I and I often wish that I could make something like this. 
but you can um, you can learn. I know you have lots have of time learn. on your hands. You have lots of free time. So <laughs> Craig's been sarcastic. Right, okay. Craig. What's tell us about your well, object? What's your next object? On the theme of clothes, I just want to show you these. This is a representation of the idea of something I find it difficult to get rid of. Now, I don't know if you can see that. That's a pair of shorts. Now, they might look quite large on the camera. Um, and in fact, they are large, but they're too small for me. And my wardrobe is full of shorts, trousers, jeans, shirts that are too small for me. And every year when the weather changes, I look through my clothes and I decide what I want to keep and what I want to throw away or give away. But I always keep lots of clothes that are too small because I like them and I live in hope that one day I'm going to lose some weight <laughs> so that they fit me. And every year my wife says, throw them away. And every year I say, no, I know I'm going to lose the weight because I could blame COVID for um, increasing my, for putting on weight, but Really, over the years, it might be getting older. I'm doing less exercise. Over the last probably five or ten years, I mm -hmm. have gradually, slowly, every year, been putting on more weight. So I keep these clothes because they give me hope. They give me a reason to not <laughs> give up and just... But they don't give you a reason to stop eating, do they? <laughs> no. But if I, I feel that if I throw them away, I, then I draw a line against ever yeah. mm -hmm. losing the fight against the, the weight the, I'm putting on. So the weight, they, yeah. it gives me hope, and that's why I keep uh -huh. my um, my clothes. Okay. Well, I'll share diet tips with you afterwards, Craig, after the class. <laughs> I know them all. The problem is I don't follow them. Um, Carol Clam, hi. She's saying wall with sparkles. Nice. Mm. Yeah. That's something. No, that but that's noticed. not what I said. No, that's not what I said. I said wool with speckles. Now, oh, speckles. sparkles are things that shine and glimmer. Like, for example, um, sorry, here, like the, the, the stones in my ring, they sparkle because they catch the light in different, in different angles. But what I said was, this wool, it's not sparkly, it's speckles. Craig has just put it in the chat file. So it's S-P-E-C-K-L-E-S. -E -E and speckles means tiny points of different colors. Uh -huh. um, it's often used with the hen. The hen is uh, the, the chicken that lays the eggs. And we often say speckled hen. And a speckled hen is a hen that isn't one color, but it has like little little dots of different colors. Uh -huh. And speckled hen is a very good British beer. Is it? Oh, favorites. yeah. Speckled hen, one of a your real, favorite beers. A real mm -hmm. owl, yes. If you see mm -hmm. speckled hen, try it. It's very good beer. So speckles. Uh -huh. Speckles. Okay. Okay. I well think it's noticed, you. though, Cloud Clam. Right. Me. Next one. Okay. Right. Well, <laughs> you know that I don't like clutter. Clutter. I don't like clutter. Lots of things in my house. I like to have like clear surfaces. But when many years ago, more than whew, 30, a good 30 years ago at least, um, I. Um, I received a gift from my next door neighbor. It was from the next door neighbor of the house where I used to live with my parents. So the house where I grew up, I left that house when I was about 18. And I think when I was a little bit older than that, my neighbor from that house, it was a very old couple. And this old couple, they didn't have any children. So I think that they kind of looked upon me like they used to, when I was growing up, I know they used to invite me over. They used to give me chocolate. They used to say, come in and we'll give you some chocolates. And <laughs> they, they kind of liked me because I was a child probably and because they were a childless couple. 
and of course I grew up and and I used to always when I came back from university I used to always make a point of going to them and saying hello and you know being greeting them and then one day the man um, his name was Fred Fred was very excited because he had bought me a gift and he bought me this gift and the gift is this a ship well you can't say it because they have to say oh, what it I'm is sorry. <laughs> see so point from craig as well yeah, we're no I've good at this point. so this is what my neighbor bought me now you've got to imagine i was about 23 years old you know it was the 1980s i was wearing my cardigan backward i was cool <laughs> i had punky hair and my neighbor had bought me this <laughs> and <laughs> he said and the thing was, this was a very expensive gift. Yes, it looked very expensive. This, this, he bought this from a jewellery shop. Wow. And, and, and I mean, this is the 1980s, so it was, it was a very expensive gift. And it's mm. all glass. It's made of glass. And it's, of a very, it's the replica of a very famous British ship called the Cutty Sark, right? So he gave me this. And then... You know, what do you do when somebody gives you, it's lovely when somebody gives you a present. And then, of course, but it was a present that was a little bit, well, let's say not quite so appropriate for a young woman who was thinking she was so cool at university and didn't have a house. I had a student flat. And I thought, hmm. <laughs> so, of course, I was very grateful. And... Um, and it was really kind of him. And I know that he and his wife had taken so much care and trouble to think of something very special that they could give to me. So I really appreciated the care and the thought that had gone into the present. But of course, this, unfortunately, is not my taste. And it's never been my taste. So I took it and then I thought, well, what do I do with it? I mean, you can't give this to somebody else because that would be a, that would be a terrible betrayal of the intention and the goodness that my neighbor had in giving it to me. But it's not it doesn't fit into my decor at all. So for the last 30 years, this thing has been <laughs> everywhere with me in all the different places and the cities and the countries that I've lived. It's always come with me, but it always has a prize position inside a cupboard. <laughs> so it's actually not on display, but it's inside a cupboard. Now, I can talk freely about this to you all around the world because my neighbor and his wife, they, they died many years ago now. But I do remember this. So this is for my neighbor, Fred, who I've never forgotten. And I don't think I'll ever part with it because I could never give this away. And the other thing is, the other reason I couldn't throw it away or even give it away is it's such a valuable thing because it's handcrafted mm -hmm. to be able to make that. And I think the work that must have gone in, I mean, obviously he didn't do it, he bought it, but the workmanship that must have gone in to create this is kind of quite special, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, it's one, you know, it's a bit useless. It's not my taste, but it's there in my cupboard. So <laughs> I'm showing um, it to everybody now. It's having its, it's having its moment of glory. <laughs> is, does anyone know what the name of that is? I did say part of the name earlier and I apologize for that, but does, can anyone write the name of that in the chat for us to make sure you know what it is. Monica's uh, telling us about the cardigan that we had earlier. Thank, Thank you. you. That's, That's correct. Right. But what is the thing that Lynn just showed us? And did you, you notice know? any other words that I used when I was describing that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I noticed one um, yeah. that I've written incorrectly. So just let me correct it. Okay. Right at the end, you said workmanship, which mm -hmm. is the way that something is created, crafted with love, with talent, that mm -hmm. you can say is lovely workmanship. It's very well made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lots of talent. Uh -huh. um, 
Nene Eduardo. It's oh, not... but he's got uh, a bottled ship. <laughs> it's uh, you're nearly there, Eduardo. It's actually a ship in a bottle. That's ship what it's a called, bottle. a ship in a bottle. But if ship you can go back to Eduardo, Eduardo's li uh, listed some lovely vocabulary there as well. Betrayal. Yeah. Betrayal I use. To betray. So, mm -hmm. Can you explain mm. what betray means? Um, yeah, it's to have faith in someone and trust someone, and then they do something that is against your trust that deceives your trust and your faith in that person. So there's mm -hmm. a phrasal verb that's very useful, and that's to let someone down. If mm -hmm. you let someone down, you disappoint them in a very strong way. You betray them. I'm trying to think of an example. Um, you can betray trust. That's a strong collocation. But mm -hmm. imagine you're in a business partnership and what, and your business partner takes all the money out the bank and runs away to another country. No, then he trial. obviously has cheated you, but he has also betrayed you. He'd, he's betrayed your trust. Mm -hmm. Good. And he also noticed uh, handcrafted and oh, the word sorry. useless. It uh -huh. It's all right. But I, yeah. I think that's that's uh, clear. Handcrafted, yeah. workmanship, uh -huh, and useless. And Clow Clam picked up a lovely one. I like, I'm glad that you noticed that, Clow. A cluttered clutter. cupboard. Clutter. Clutter. It's a difficult one to say because it's that uh sound. Clutter. <laughs> and uh, clutter means lots of things that make things messy. Uh -huh. So lots of objects and it's it's not clean and it's not tidy. There's lots of clutter. Uh -huh. And the adjective is cluttered. So what is cluttered. not easy to say is a cluttered cupboard. Mm -hmm. That's not easy. A cluttered cupboard. My uh -huh. cupboard is very cluttered. Uh -huh. Well done, junk. though, Clow, and well done, Eduardo. Okay, yeah, well, Craig, well your next one. Yes, well, it's quite interesting because um, obviously we both chose clothes for our first items and my second item is very similar in many ways to Lynn's ship in a bottle now when I was younger I traveled quite a lot and when I traveled to different places I always brought back presents and gifts for my family maybe a t-shirt maybe some earrings for my mom maybe some wine for my dad I always brought back something from the place that I'd been to and when my parents were alive many many years ago they went to venice in italy on holiday i think they went for a week and they obviously felt that they needed to bring me back a present so in a, in, in a very similar vein or very similar way to lynn's um ship in a bottle that we will now remove i will show you what my parents brought back from their <laughs> trip to venice it's a, a plastic gondola. Um, it does You've have... just given it away. They're supposed to <laughs> guess Oh, that. I'm sorry. I just said it. Oh, dear. I'm terrible at this game. There is, there is a man who works on the gondola who's also made of plastic. And the is beautiful... it electric? Is it electric? It does, yeah. If you plug in, I'll try and do it for you. Let me see if this works. Because the magic of this thing is that we can't hear you very well, Craig. You disappeared under the table. Oh, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> there he is again. So, yeah, the magic of this is that it does actually light up. Oh, um, so yeah. <laughs> and there's the man along the beautiful rivers of Venice. Now, now, do you have that on your sideboard, or is that in a cupboard? <laughs> Well, as I mentioned, it was a gift from my parents. So mm -hmm. when they were alive, they used to visit from time to time. We kept it in a cupboard in a box, <laughs> put the box over there. And when they came to visit, we took it out the box and we put it next to the bed. And when they left, we put it back Aww. in the box again. <laughs> what we do for love, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and as you mentioned, as you mentioned, Lynn, it's just amazing how you can love someone for so many years and not really understand the kind of taste that yeah. they have. 
Well, it was possibly worse than your parents. At least mine was my neighbor. I don't, I don't blame him for not knowing. And in actual fact, my neighbor never came to my house. So I never had to get the ship in the bottle and put it out. <laughs> but your parents should have known you better, maybe. <laughs> and um, Cloudcam's asking me where I, where I hide it. Well, it used to go in this, obviously in this box, and, and in the cupboard, but it, it's 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 something I can't get rid of because <laughs> I, I just love it. I love it because of how how not my taste it is, how opposite <laughs> to to my taste. So I um, suppose it will remind you of what you it, if you ever were to forget what you like, it keeps reminding you what you don't like. Well, it stays in the box at the moment, but. <laughs> This is the first time I've taken it out of the box in about five years. Uh -huh. um, you do re <laughs> thank you, Eduardo. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's, it's the, the most, most brilliant, brilliant gift ever. ever. Uh -huh. And yeah. you do realize that now that Craig and I have shown you both of our little, um, <laughs> what would we say, um, vessels, <laughs> because we're showing them on this kind of open forum, you realize that we can never re-gift these to anybody, don't you? No, we can't give them away. <laughs> we can't no, give them away. <laughs> We're stuck with them. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. I'll never forget my parents' trip. More importantly, I'll never forget my parents because it's so mm -hmm. typical of them to, to bring something <laughs> like that back. And uh, yeah, I did. I did. I'm not, not not very good at this game. I did say earlier that it's actually a gondola from Venice. Venice. So a gondola, gondola is, is the type of boat that people uh, have to. They punt it, don't they? The word is punt. P-U-N-T, um, because they don't roll, but they put the stick on, on the on the bottom and push it along. Uh -huh. remember okay, I, I noticed. Oh, sorry, go on. Mm -hmm. If you want to join us, remember at the bottom of the screen, you have the URL, the internet address that you need to put in your browser, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox, whatever you're using, even um, the Apple one. <laughs> And we'd love to have you come in and, and join us. I'll put the link in the chat one more time. And we want to hear from you. Do you have any possessions, any things that you cannot bear to part with, to give away, to throw away, to get rid of, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Now, just for the noticing game, mm, people are not so noticing so much, but I, I noticed something that Craig said last, last session. And he said, in a similar vein, in a similar vein. Can you put that in the chat file, Craig? Yeah. Yeah. Can mm -hmm. I put things in the chat file? I don't know. I don't think I can you do can that. because no, I, I, can't. I, okay. I started the stream. Okay. So in a similar vein. And what he meant was that's a colloquial expression and it means similarly, or this is like what you have just said. Uh -huh. In a similar vein. A vein is the, the, <laughs> the blue like vessel under your skin, which takes your blood. Yeah, you have veins in your body, which carry the blood around your body. And I don't know why, where that expression comes from, because it just means in the same way, doesn't it? In a similar way. Yeah, in, in a, a similar, similar way, vein. in a mm. similar vein. But it's a very common uh, colloquial, spoken expression. It's a spoken Well noticed, Lynn. Congratulations. I think you mm -hmm. should get your point back for noticing that. Yeah, I'm very good at noticing. You see, this is what I want my yeah. students to do. You've got to notice to get off that plateau. <laughs> okay. All right. Can I go on to my next one? Yep. Over to Everybody you. Everybody was so fascinated looking at the back of your head as you were plugging the thing in and then trying to put the light on the gondola. They didn't That's why it's the live. Language. <laughs> That's why it's live. It's obviously right. live. Well, now that it's live, I'm going to skip one. Because you're expecting my objects in a certain order, but I'm going to skip one because I'm That's seeing the tricky. time. We're never okay. going to be able to do all of them. Okay. So the next object, of course, I can never, ever, ever throw it away, right? Never, ever. In fact, this is what my husband is going to look like, hopefully, in 30 years, I would say. Shall I show you? Yes, I'm dying to know. This is what my <laughs> husband is going to look like in 30 years. With that now, dress. <laughs> this is my teddy. Well, the dress, the dress here was made by my grandmother. 
right? It's probably a little bit younger than this cardigan. It was made by my grandmother and it was made by my grandmother to wow. protect him because you see, I loved all his fur completely mm. off. You see how much I loved this little teddy bear, right? And he's got very little ha hair left oh. and his stuffing's coming out. You see oh. his stuffing here in his arm, yeah? He's been stitched, yeah? But he's been so loved, right? And this is what you look like when you've been loved to bits. <laughs> So I showed this to my husband and I said, this is you in 30 years time. <laughs> what did he say when you said that to him? He gave me a kiss. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling all the secrets now. Right. Now, my teddy bear, of course. Oh, <laughs> just gave that away. <laughs> so yep. teddy bear again. We're, we're no good One point game. away from you. One Lynn. point away. My teddy bear, obviously, this was something that I, I think I've had since I was a baby. I cannot remember being without my teddy bear. And 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 he got into this poor, sorry state when, when I was 10, I think. And then my grandmother knitted this little, this little dress for him. Yeah. And then he did have a friend. <laughs> he had a friend, which is Brother Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> who also got a dress um but brother brunny i brother bunny i can definitely remember receiving him when i was a little girl and getting him out of the big sack that santa left behind for me and i remember unwrapping bunny and getting him out of the box and i remember jumping up and down saying teddy teddy you've got a brother <laughs> <laughs> because I always wanted a brother and I've got a sister. I haven't got a brother. So, of course, these two little, these two, uh, I could never, ever throw them away. And I actually just said to my husband when I told him that this is how he's going to look, because they're very delicate. So now I have the two of them in a plastic bag <laughs> and the bag is in a trunk and the trunk is full of my stashed secret stash of things, yeah? And um, they're in a trunk because if I leave them out, of course, they will disintegrate even more. But I did say to my husband tonight, I said, you do realize that when you, when I die and I have to be put in a coffin, you have to get an extra wide coffin because they have to go with me. I, I couldn't <laughs> bear the idea that these were left behind after I'm gone they have to go with me I think mm -hmm. so I'm probably going to have to have a bit of a bigger coffin to get all of these things in I think I'll leave the ship in the bottle I'll leave that behind but yeah, the teddies have idea. to come with me I think <laughs> so you've said what they were and we'll show you quickly um what Sorry. they actually were a teddy bear um mm -hmm. was the first item then a cuddly rabbit to cuddle is to hug in a loving way Mm -hmm. um, and cuddly toys are what most children enjoy having. Mm -hmm. Did you notice any words that Lynn used? I noticed four that I oh. liked. Ah, you're on, you're on the game now. You're, <laughs> you're learning how to catch the game up. Go on. So we've had no comments from people watching us live, so I'll show you the four that I noticed. Stuffing, that's when you stuff something, you put something inside something else. You can stuff your clothes into a suitcase for example, and obviously inside Lynn's teddy bears and cuddly rabbit, there was um, some kind of material or some fluffy thing that you push inside to give mm -hmm. the cuddly toy its body. And that's the stuffing. Mm -hmm. um, and we had to knit before, which is to create things with wool, with wool, excuse me. <clears throat> and to stitch is to take a needle and thread and close something up when you have an operation if they cut your body open then you get stitches because they need to stitch your body closed and mm -hmm. lynn was saying that the hair of the teddy bear had rubbed off if you rub your skin together over time then you remove the hair so to rub off the hair mm -hmm. and lynn said that she kept it in a trunk when an elephant now, now a, a few trunk, people have asked what a trunk is <laughs> You explain it. Go ahead. Well, a trunk is, um, <laughs> if we go back to the old sea, sea, seafaring people, um, 
that before they had suitcases, suitcases with or trolley suitcases like you have nowadays, before they had that, when people went on long distance journeys, they used to have, it wasn't a suitcase, you couldn't pick it up. You needed two men to lift it, two people to lift it. And a trunk was probably the size of a desk, wasn't it? Probably, yeah, yeah it was, I mean, it was a big thing. <laughs> And huge uh, box. a huge box, a huge box, probably about maybe 50 or 60 centimetres across, maybe about 60 or 70 metres, centimetres high. And it could be up to a metre, well, not a metre, but well, maybe, yeah, maybe 90 centimetres. And that it's a huge box and it was usually made of metal and it had big straps on it, leather straps. And people used to use them when they went on board ships in the olden yeah. days. When they went on board ships, you saw the trunks being taken on board. Nowadays, you don't see anybody buying them. Nowadays, trunks. it's suitcases with wheels. Suitcases with trunks. wheels. And nowadays, and, and I I love trunks. And I actually, I got one. My And there's another thing I can't throw away, you see. <laughs> <laughs> because my father found me a trunk before I went away to university. And <laughs> my dad thought, look at this, I've got a trunk for all your things to pack you off to university. And sure enough, we took the trunk down on top of the car. Wow. And in the trunk, I had clothes and books and, and everything. Uh -huh. And and my father, he, he, he renovated the trunk because it was a very old trunk. And I remember that he, um, he restored the trunk and he he put my name in a in engraving on a little brass plaque that he put onto the trunk so the trunk has my name on it and that has also followed me around all my life every time we've moved and I use it as a television table in the bedroom so I cover the trunk with a cloth nobody knows it's a trunk but underneath it's a trunk and, because and nobody it's knows it's full of teddy bears. And it's full of my secret stash. Your secret stash. <laughs> of things I can't bear to part with. Uh -huh. Lots of comments coming in. Uh, Cloud Comes says, did you say the plastic save in the cabinet? Yeah, I keep it in a box in the wardrobe. Nobody sees it, Cloud Come. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, you didn't notice things because you were so fascinated by the gondola. <laughs> so um, was I. Which, yeah, it's true because now, <laughs> now we've got some people noticing things. things. Um, Eduardo <laughs> says, yes, it's a teddy bear with a nice dress. And then obviously the word trunk. And Kyle Cam says uh, to stitch, to close with mm -hmm. a needle and well thread. Mm -hmm. And unwrapping to remove paper and wrapping from something. Uh -huh. um, and did you say you love it to bits? Was I said correct? I've loved it two bits to so bits, with the past tense now two bits means completely totally Utterly. to the point that it disintegrates <laughs> yeah and that is to love something to bits uh -huh. and that's us. true i have loved my my teddy bear to bits <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely uh -huh. okay i think we have time for one more we do one have more, to finish on. on time today but um, years ago, I traveled to um, the US because my ex-girlfriend lived there in New York, and I lived with her for six months in Brooklyn. And my ex-girlfriend had a sister who lived in Long Island with her husband, and mm -hmm. they lived in a flat, or as they say in America, an apartment, which needed painting. Now, I wasn't working at the time, so I volunteered to paint their flat. Um, because they were very nice people, because I didn't have a job, and because obviously I wanted to be liked by my then girlfriend's <laughs> family. So <laughs> I'll help you. Of course I'll help you. And I didn't accept any money. When I finished, it took me about a week to paint this, this apartment. And they were very happy, and they said, well, look, we want to pay you. I said, no, 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 no. It's my pleasure. So to say thank you, they bought me this pen. Oh. But it's a particular kind of pen. And if you are a Spanish speaker, it's pluma. But do you know the English word for this type of pen? And it's quite an expensive one. It's a Mont Blanc. 
Oh, which is they're one very of, expensive. And they're very it's one of the reasons I've kept it because this is probably uh-huh. about 35 years old now. Wow. And it's I do use it occasionally. I'm not a huge fan of this type of pen because these days with very thin paper, it usually leaks, it goes through to the other side and you have to keep refilling it with ink to put ink inside. So, um, but I do enjoy using it. I do like it. It's one of my favorite possessions. It reminds me of that time when I lived with my ex-girlfriend in New York and it was a, a gift to say thank you. And it was unlike the gondola, it's a gift I really like. <laughs> so I do keep it here on my desk and I do use it from time to time. Uh-huh. <laughs> so what is it? Do you know what this kind of pen is? Let me see your comments in the chat. And remember, you can join us. We only have about 10 minutes left. But if you want to come in and tell us something that you can't give up or throw mm-hmm. away or get rid of, we'd love to hear from you. Maybe while um, I I noticed two things in your language, so I can tell you those while the other people are noticing other things, maybe. I liked it when you said, I'm not a huge fan of, (laughs) which is a really colloquial way to say, I don't like it a lot. Uh So to be a a fan is, is somebody who follows things like football fans, basketball fans, um, huge is an exaggerated word for big. Uh-huh. And that's a very a very common expression, isn't it? To say, I'm a huge yeah. fan of this, which means I really like this. Or you say, I'm not a huge fan of uh, rice. <laughs> yeah, for example, it can be a food or of anything. Yeah, so it means I don't like a lot. Mm-hmm. Now, it's not a stylograph, Cloudcam. That's not the name in English. We have a different name for uh-huh. it. Mm-hmm. Um, to refill with ink, oh, to volunteer. Yeah, I volunteered to to clean, to sorry, uh-huh. to paint their their apartment. And yes, yeah. you refill, you fill again. Any word with a re, the prefix re, usually means again, again. one more time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. to fill again. But no, nobody knows the name of this. Apparently, I do. <laughs> what is it, Lynn? It's a fountain pen. Yes, it's a fountain <laughs> pen from an ex-girlfriend, sister, and brother-in-law. Uh-huh. You could forget the last bit. It's just a fountain pen. <laughs> yeah, it's just a fountain pen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a fountain pen. Mm-hmm. Do we have time and for you... one more? Yeah, I think so. You or me? What do you want? You. Me. What shall I do? Something... Uh... Well, I've done I've done my sentimental. Well, all of my ones that are a bit sentimental, I have to say. I think that's why I keep them because they're sentimental. But uh, okay, I will try this one because it's well. No, nobody will know what that is. I won't. I, I won't do that one. I'll do this one. Right. Look at this. Can you see what this is? Can you, oh, yeah, that's coming up very well. Does anybody know what that is? What that is? This is a very important document, a document. Now, your first signature? No. (laughs) It's a very important document. Now, this document actually does have the signature of the person who made the document. You can't see that on the on the light, but it's actually signed Annie, who is my daughter, one of my daughters. And Annie um i had to actually write what this is because she didn't know how to write so she came to me in 2008 so this was uh, she, at the time she would have been 5 right so she april 2008 so this month <laughs> um all those years ago 18 years ago nearly 19 years ago And she came to me with this, with a very serious expression on her face. And she said, this is for you. And I said, oh, what is it? (laughs) (laughs) As you would. And then she said, and then I wrote it on the back because I never wanted to forget it. This is a map for Mammy from Annie showing her how to always find Annie. (laughs) did you get that so this is a map 
that she made for me in case we ever got separated. And she said, with this map, I will always find her again. Now, isn't that, you know, you can't throw that away, can you? This no. has been traveling around with me everywhere in my, I have it, I usually have it in my purse. <laughs> and, you know, you can't, you can't throw something like that away, can you? But I don't you have think, to keep that. I don't think the audience are going to guess this. And I'm curious why you described it as a handy dandy map. What's <laughs> the reason for that? Because when uh, my daughter was five, we used to watch an American children's series, which maybe in South America they have been, um, maybe you've seen it in South America, and it was called Blue's Clues. And it was uh, this, it was a children's series. And this, the, the main character in this was a man, and a lot of it was animated, but there was a real man who did it. And they they had little mysteries, and they try. It was to try to teach children how to deduce things, and and so they would set up a little story, and then he would say to the kids, "So, how do we know what happened?" And then he would sit in his armchair, and he used to get out a handy dandy notebook, <laughs> <laughs> and in his handy dandy notebook, he would write down like the logical steps to be able to solve the problem. And this mm -hmm. was like, it was a children's program. It was a great children's program. They, my kids loved it. And so my daughter called it the handy dandy map. Now, <laughs> handy dandy means very clever, very clever, like very useful, very clever. If something is handy dandy, it's a very useful and clever object. So I don't know, have you got any objects that are handy dandy? <laughs> I've got quite a few. Yeah, but unfortunately, we haven't got time to get to them. But just to quickly put up some comments we're having um, that we've had. Cloud Cam says the first letter your daughter wrote to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, <laughs> sadly, Christine has missed most of the life. She's been working overtime. Well, it's good that you're working, Christine. So yeah. I'm pleased <laughs> that you're, you're actually working. And yeah. um, Bryna says, I watched that series too here in Colombia. <laughs> Yeah, I loved it. I love that series. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we only managed to do three each, and we have three more. Maybe we can do a round two another mm -hmm. week Maybe. and look at the other three. That'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. Let us well, know if the what people you liked it, I don't know. You better let us know if you liked it or not, or whether you thought it was useful for your English. Now, I think all of you could notice be be a little bit more active with noticing language. You need to be a little bit more listening carefully mm -hmm. and just to quickly review we were talking about things that you can't bear or you can't stand or you really don't want to part with which is a phrasal verb or throw away another phrasal verb chuck out means the same but it's more informal get rid of if you're a spanish speaker deshacer de algo mm -hmm. give up give away um or do without manage without so um, I don't think we're hoarders, are we, Lynn? We don't keep things for the sake of keeping things, but we do no. hang on to things that we have value uh -huh. and that we like. And as Marie Kondo says, if you take something in your hand and it gives you joy, you should probably keep it. Yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah, That's we good. don't. And also, I think it's a, it's a, what do you call it? It's a... Um, Occupational hazard. There's, some, there's a there's a phrase occupational hazard. That's a danger that you have from the particular profession that you you exercise. But I wasn't going to use that. But I think it's a kind of occupational hazard as you get older. As you get older, you have more things that have sentimental value for you. <laughs> that well, that makes sense because you've you mm -hmm. you have more years in your life exactly. and you've had exactly. more relationships mm -hmm. and more meaningful presents and gifts so yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> absolutely so um we have to stop now because you've got an appointment to go to craig so it's um uh, bye bye from me i'm from putitlikethis.com my name is lynn and um, and i offer online classes so if any of you are interested in online classes i tailor make the courses for you then look at my website and you can get in touch with me
And thank you for listening and uh, indulging us <laughs> in listening to our stories. <laughs> and my name's Craig from AnsonEngles.com, where you can learn English for free with lots of exercises, free courses, and lots of material on our website, including our um, two weekly newsletter that is delivered free to your inbox every two weeks. And next week, um, Monica's having a little rest. So it's going to be me on my own. I apologize for that next week, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, have going to, I am going to prepare a really interesting hour for you next Wednesday. So I look forward to you joining me for another live stream next week. Thank you for watching and we'll yeah. see you soon. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Happy Easter, because I'll see you after Easter. So happy oh, Easter course. to everyone. Happy Easter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All bye -bye. right. Bye-bye.